Robbie here from AFTV with a true legend, the man in the building, Kanu. And it is an absolute pleasure to meet you, so um, it's great to have you here. You. Uh, you know, I've got so many things to ask you because of all the footballers I know, you've got to have had one of the most interesting careers, starting from playing right up to now. You're still so active with so many things. So there's so much to, to talk to you about. First of all, I'm going to get into um, your foundation, the, the Carnu Heart Foundation. And of course, uh, you know, I, re I remember at the time when it all happened, like obviously we, we see you playing on the pitch, week in, week out for Arsenal, Portsmouth, Nigeria, you know, super fit player, training every day. And then all of a sudden we heard that Kanu's had a heart attack. I mean, how, how was that at the time when that all happened? Um, it's a big shock. Um, like you said, on top of my game, um, um, won the Olympics in Atlanta. Um, and then, yeah. Signed a new contract with Inter Milan from Ajax, and it was like, ooh, um, they have a lot of good players there, Ronaldo, Zamorano. So it's like you're looking into it, you want to go back and uh, do your stuff. And then suddenly played some friendly games, and, uh, two, and then the third one, um, they said, no, you're not going anymore, you have to stay at home. So I was like, who? Stay at home, why? I'm fit, I want to go and play. Why should you ask me to go and stay at home? They said, no, we'll let, we'll let you know. So I was like sitting at the hotel waiting for them to come back to me. And then they went for the game. I didn't go with them. And after the game, the next day, before they come back to me, I saw in the newspaper and uh, national TV that I cannot play football anymore. It's like I have a health problem. And that's how I, I knew about it. So after then, in the evening, is when they called me and I said, um, this and that happened. I said, it's late. I've already heard what was going on. So. You didn't hear it from them first. You heard it from TV first. TV from, so it's so oh, strange. Man. It was so um, annoying because they're supposed to tell me for me to understand what is going on. And to, mm. But all the same, it's like the doctor over there went from, on air everywhere that is finished. You can play football. And for you, that's the only thing you know or love to do. And you want to become the best in the world and suddenly this happened it's like Phew. you're saying it so casually i mean <laughs> listen number one if that happened and you 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 know you get a heart attack or you know or you get heart problems that's that's a big issue anyway but number two to have, this is what you've done all your life and as you said you're looking forward now to playing with some of the best players in the world and somebody turns around and says that actually just immediately there's no build up to it just you're done i mean it was difficult at then, because now it's like a long time ago, but then it was like, you don't know where to go, you don't know what to do. It's like, ooh, something hit you, so how do I move, how do I progress, how do I... The first thing I did is just pick up the phone to call my family, to let them know that, yeah, this is happening, but they have to calm down, uh, it's not the end, and then I have to now start to find a way out? Am I stopping football? What am I going to do? There's a lot of things going into my head. Uh, and like I said before, uh, this is all I know. This is all I do and uh, I love doing. So what should I do next? But um, I didn't even agree with what they were saying. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to go all out and then uh, try to find out uh, if it's true or if there's any wrong thing out there. But, um, yeah, going from one hospital, even I came to the UK, I went to Boston, I went to a lot of three uh, different hospitals in different countries, yeah. even in Holland, I went back to Holland. And, um, but after I said and done all the stuff I did, um, it came out that uh, I have a problem with my heart. It's not like a, it's not like heart attack, but uh, the aortic valve was not closing well, so yeah. it's a problem with the heart. And if it's not closing well, and then you keep playing, uh, the heart is doing a lot of work, and it keeps getting big and big and big. And who knows, it might knock, the, knock off, and then that's all. So I was like, ooh. And in a sense, it's also good that they yeah, yeah. <laughs> found it out. Yeah. And the other one is like, no, it's not good because of the news that you got, you're not going to play football. Uh, but um, one advice I got from when I went to America, Ohio, Cleveland, it's like I'm young, and uh, if I can do the operation, 
um, I have the chance to play football. And that was the only hospital that said that to me. So I was like, ooh, that's a good option. <laughs> Let me go for it. Mm. And, you know, what you've done since, you know, we're going to go on and talk about um, some of your career. But I just thought I, I have to start with this because what you've done since off the pitch in raising money for your Heart Foundation, and you've got this event coming up at the end of the month, uh, 30th of September, where you're raising more money again, um, has been incredible. You know what I mean? It's been absolutely incredible because you, you've turned something that would have been such a negative into possibly something that maybe one day you look back when you're older and say that was way greater than anything I did on the pitch. You, you've used what you did, you've used your influence on the pitch to do greater things in my opinion. And the, you know, tell us about your foundation. Um, yeah, like I said, um, if I stopped, uh, if it was done that you can't play football anymore, it means that you have to change trade and start doing other stuff. But um, it was good that I went in and thank God I came out. Uh, everything was positive. Uh, uh, but I have to stay off for one year, one good year. I didn't play football, mm. but like rehabilitation, doing some stuff, so I was just to get back. Um, and that was the first time that that hospital have done a footballer a heart operation. So it was like, you're not sure what's going to happen, but mm -hmm. thank God it went well. But looking at that, if you look at um, the checkups, what you paid, traveling from one place to another, and then not only that, even in Africa, we don't even know what the symptoms is all about. Um, there's a lot of things you have to look into and then know that who. There's a lot of problem in Africa, a lot of problem with kids out there, because whenever they are sick, immediately the parents, what goes into their head is malaria and typhoid. Mm. And sometimes it's not those two. Maybe mm. the kid is suffering or having <clears throat> the same issue or a hole in the heart or things like that. So I was like, okay, if I've gone through this as an adult, what of the kids? And what of people back home? How do they raise funds for even the checkup? Because the checkup is also expensive. Yeah. Then the operation is safe. Ooh, they can't even have that kind of money to do that. So I said, no, this is time now to go back and uh, do something for them and help them out. Yeah. And the foundation was established in the year 2000. And um, the first three kids, uh, we brought them here in London. The first kid, when I was playing uh, African Nations Cup 2000, I was in a ho hotel. Uh, where they camped us. Uh, the mom heard about Kanha Foundation, then brought the daughter um, in the lift coming to where my room is on the fifth floor. Me, I was coming down to eat. On the lift, the, when the lift opened, then I saw them. I mean, then I saw them, the daughter just fell down and fainted. So we have to grab the gear. Everybody was like running up and down just to save her. Then we brought her down, got a car, ambulance, and take her to hospital. Then I said to the mom, it's going to be the first kid we're going to operate. And thank God, we raised funds, I raised funds, and then we brought them to England with the help of um, some Arsenal fans, because at that mm -hmm. time we were like trying to reach a lot of people. And then when they came in, the eyes were like blue, they can play, they're not happy, they're like, they're not in this world. You can see the sadness and uh, the cry of the mm. kid and the family. You can see they're not happy. But after the operation, a day, two days after the operation, I went back to the hospital to see them. The same kid that was not even laughing at me or laughing with me or playing with me started j jumping around, being mm. happy. And, and that's this, all the story about the Kano Foundation. So from there, I was like, ooh, there's a lot to do than only winning trophies. Trophies is very good, but to save a life means a lot. Wow, it's amazing. And how many, how many kids have your foundation treated in the time since you set it up? Um, we have done 542 operations. Wow. And, uh, That's incredible. Yeah, we saved 542 lives. Um, all the same, um, I, I can say here that we have lost almost like eight of them. That's the, the sad news yeah. about it, but that's life. The more we can help, uh, the better for all of them. But um, heart is not something that you play around. 
You might get injury on the ankle, knee, shoulder. It takes time, it heals. But when the heart stops, that's the end of the person. So for yeah. me, uh, the, the pressure is always on the foundation to help the people on the waiting list. And uh, we have almost like 200 on the waiting list. Mm. And uh, if I can do anything now, yeah, most of them might go. And um, that's why, why we are doing this game, this fundraising game to make sure that we can at least help to clear that number. If we can do all the same time, good. If not, but at least create the awareness and then uh, help out. And we're, and we're going to put all the, the links in the description and everything for anybody who wants to donate to, you know, you, you're hearing it. It's just a fantastic charity that really makes a difference. And uh, tell us about the game, which is going to be happening um, on the 30th of September. Is that right? 30th of September um, at the Hive in Barnet, who's playing? Um, the good news is that everybody that I've called, all the legends, the ex-players that I've called, none of them have said no. They always want to be part of it because they know the story, they know what we are doing, they know it's for a good cause. And um, it's going to be, yeah, big players, uh, legends that you haven't heard of, that mm -hmm. you haven't seen for a long time, going to be there, Heskey, um, yeah. Sherryham, um, Galas, So, So Gambo, <laughs> uh, Perez, um, Lauren, um, Bebetov, um, a lot of names. Also in, uh, in Tottenham players. Uh, no, they have a lot of fans. You won't give them no abuse on that oh, day, don't no, worry. No, don't do that. <laughs> they are playing for charity. <laughs> no, they have uh, Niger is playing as well. Yeah. Um, Ebue is playing. It's uh, great. It's great that Ebue is going to be playing in there. Um, it's good. It's, it's, you know what you love doing. It's always good to see you back there doing it and uh, doing mm. it for a good cause. So, um, Jeju Kocha is playing. Yakubu is playing. Um, um, what do you call it? Uh, the defenders that we do have. We have a lot of them. That. Mm. And the good thing is that. Um, Whenever I'm home or sometimes on the road, you see calls coming in from the players that they want to be part of it. Mm. And that is a good sign and a good thing for us that uh, we have enough players who want to play for, for, for us. It's fantastic. I saw JJ Okocha playing a game a couple of years ago, man. He, he's like he's still got it. Yeah. Some of the skills and tricks he was doing, I was like, wow. Yeah, I think he and uh, Pires. Yeah. They're still playing. Well, yeah. Also, yeah, they're still it's like he could still play now. He was here. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So yeah. it's going to be a good day. Um, um, Len Seaman is also uh, the goalkeeper mm. for the Brilliant. Premiership. And, uh, Rami is the goalkeeper for the African yeah. uh, Premiership. So it's going to be uh, a, a battle because the African team wants to win. Mm. And, um, uh, for the Premiership uh, Masters as well, I don't think they want to lose. So mm. it's going to be a good battle. It's a fantastic lineup. Really looking forward to it. Listen, your career, amazing career. And what was it like for you when you first turned up at Arsenal? You know, you'd have come, you know, you'd have heard a lot about the club. You, 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 you come in with a legendary manager in Arsene Wenger, all these big players here. I mean, what was your feeling when you first came? Ooh, it's a tough one because, uh, yeah, of course, uh, the Premiership was not really that uh, big the way it is now, but it was now attracting some good players and a lot of uh, um, good things. And when I sat uh, in Milan, I was like, oh, Arsenal, that was a good club. And I started looking at uh, the history of the club and who, are, who have played there, and the coaches and all this stuff. I said, no, it's a fantastic club. And then, um, um, and then like I said, um, I have almost like five clubs who are looking for me. Mm. But uh, Arsene keeps coming, calling and um, it, was, it took almost like six months. And I can see how serious Arsene was and uh, they wanted it more than the other clubs. And then. Uh, yeah, I decided to come. And uh, not only that, uh, of course, I played with uh, Mark Overmars mm. uh, in Ajax. Mm -hmm. And he was like telling me, oh, this place is like Ajax, you have to come. It's good, with good manager, as in talking to you in his normal way. 
calm, making you feel at home already. And uh, yes, I said yes. I have to mm. go there. And um, yeah. What was it like playing for Wenger? Because um, obviously, you know, he's left now um, after such a long time. But in those days, he was really in his prime. I mean, probably the best manager in the world at those times. Everybody wants to play for him. The only uh, thing for good players is to look at the manager and know who the kind of manager they are and then uh, wants to play for them. So from day one, when he called uh, in and uh, knowing the club, uh, yes, I was like, Pooh, I'm going to go and play for him. And I know it's going to be difficult because a lot of stories have been there that uh, uh, the league is not a league that... Uh, uh, it's too relaxed, like when you are playing in Italy mm. and uh, Holland. It's where you, you're going to fight and work hard and all those stuff. So I was looking up for it. And to play for him yeah, means a lot because he had that trust in me. Yeah. And um, at that time, a lot of people were like saying, Pooh, this guy haven't played for long. So what did he see in him? Why are you taking that gamble to, to, to get him to us now? And it was like... I've seen a lot from him because I, they used to send people to come to Inter Milan to watch my training yeah. and some of my games. I didn't even know, but I was like, okay. But after everything, he would still give a call and said, oh, we need you. So I was like, okay. So he, took, he did that and I appreciate that for a club of that uh, uh, nature to be a big club like that to still go for you mm. without you even playing for long. It means a lot and that's why I appreciate Arsenal a lot and thank them for what they have done, and I came in, but I have to also do my part to show people that I'm still the same person. And you won a lot of things at Arsenal. A season unbeaten, an invincible tag that is, uh, you can walk with forever, um, that not many, uh, well, hardly any players in, who played in this league can walk with. I mean, what was that season like? Wonderful season. Um, you know, the more he gets the good players, the more we stay as family. And then the old ones really helped because uh, Tony was there, um, Keon, Dixon, or the Ray Paula. So when Medali come in, uh, you will notice that Pooh, uh, this is not a place that you come to joke around. This is mm -hmm. a place that uh, you have like ten captains, ten leaders, or more than. And then the spirit is that. We are fighters and we are winners. Mm. We don't give anything to anybody and we don't lose to anybody. We believe that we are best and in every game we have to win. You can see that from the training. And when we are training, it's like a fight. It's like we're fighting against each other. Nobody wants to lose. So we carried that to the games. Mm. And uh, for us, and I think he <coughs> was more relaxed, not too many pressure on his shoulder because he knows his team, he knows the people that he got. God, they had to do it for him. Mm. And uh, we really went out there and fight for him, and fight for the club. Um, like I said, even if you're not playing well, there's somebody there to kick you and hit you on the head and say, come on, what's going on? Mm. So let's go and do it. And that's why when sometimes when we are down, we still come back and win games. And when it's difficult, we can struggle uh, for a win, 1-0, and then we are there. So it makes the team tick, and it makes us uh, keep going. So. It was good for every player to be there, and there's competition. There's a lot of competition in the team. From when I first came in to the day I left, it was like tough competition. Every position, you have people who want to play if you're not playing. Mm. And my favourite moment, what was that uh, on here? It says, uh, um, the guys were asking me, your most um, heartwarming memory. Well, I'm going to give you mine, right? <laughs> first, it's the hat trick. At Chelsea, you know, even the other day when I was there for the game, right? I was just when we was doing that when we were two 0 down, right? I turned around to a guy next to me. I said, "Do you remember them days when we used to come here? When Carnu was here, now we could do it a comeback like that. When Carnu scored that hat trick, and actually, to be fair to the team, we nearly came back. We nearly came back, but that was that was an incredible, incredible hat trick that everybody still talks about to this day." Um, yes, that's, that's something that uh, I don't think anybody will live to forget, We live to remember. And me too, it was a special day for me, especially scoring mm. the three goals. Um, 
If you look at the record at that time, what Chelsea was like doing, they haven't lost a game at home, and I believe they didn't even concede at home. So it was tough. So how do you come there to change that? Uh, but like I said, the spirit, the Arsenal spirit was high, was there, and everybody wants to uh, go in there and do whatever you have to do. Um, but uh, like you rightly know, we are two down already, first mm. half. So yeah. uh, people were like, oh. Same like the other, that's why it just reminded me when I was there the other day. That's what I said to that guy, if we, we need Kanu now, you know? The spirit of Kanu, the, the spirit of Kanu nearly came back that day still. Well, that's true. <laughs> when we went back to the dressing room, us and uh, his usual way, it was like, it was not even shouting to anybody or anybody. It was like saying, okay, um, we're too done. Let's go in there, enjoy it. Um, do what we know how to do. Uh, we didn't play well in the first half. The second half, we can turn it around. And, uh, so if you're a player and then you come in and the gaffer was not shouting at you, was not screaming, was not yeah, going after anybody, for you, even if you're doing, a, if you're doing mistakes, you're like, okay. Yeah. I have to call it myself. Us as fans, we're always like, <laughs> we're always saying to ourselves, I hope when they get in there, he goes right and throw in, you know, cups at them and all that. And, you know, that's what we want. But you, you, you're saying that you like, you appreciated the calmness then. Yeah, because it worked. If I believe if it was, it was not working, it could have changed. But for, at that time, it was working because when it come in, like I said, all the leaders there, all the captains, the big boys there, I was like, who? This is not, this is mm. not us. This is not us now. This is... So we have to go out there and show them that this is... And immediately when we came back, you can see we changed. It's like mm. a changed team. And then we start playing and then, yeah, got that um, first goal. But it was like dripping and the floor was like... Whenever you hit the ball and push it more well and shoot it very... F it's going to go more faster mm. than a normal field when they, you have a little yeah, rain on the field. Yeah, see? So when I got the first one, I know that, yeah, if I use my toe, and then it's normally, it's, it's not every player that can do that, to toe the ball. So you have to know how to use the feet mm. to toe the ball, and that's what I did, and then it went first, and then it was first. Then two, one, we were like, whoa, yeah, we're back now, we can do that, let's go on. And then got the ball again from Mark, but the good thing is Thierry saw it, and then have to block the defender, then I have to shoot from that angle, and then score. And that was 2-2. Two -two. And for us, 2-2 two -two was okay. Knowing that they haven't lost in that field, knowing mm. that they haven't even considered any goal in that field. So like, okay, that's normal, that's okay, we can go home now. And we can see our fans, they are also happy. Mm. Everyone we like, how many minutes to finish the game? It's gone, no, it's cool, let's go. Mm. But immediately I saw that ball going, because Suka, that was Suka was supposed to give me the pass, but he made a mistake and I have to chase the defender. He wanted to kick the ball, then I have to intercept. Before the game, I have a friend, Celestin Babayaro, mm -hmm. and I'm always on the phone with him. He's like, when you're coming to play against us, I've told them all your tricks. I've told them what you normally do. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to work today. <laughs> so I was like, okay. And then before the game, I still met him in the dressing room. He said the same thing with me. So when I saw the keeper running off from the post to come and defend, I was like, oh, maybe he's going to remember what uh, Bapayaro told him, but I have to do what I have to do. Mm -hmm. And everybody that knows me, you might know that I'm going to do that, but it's difficult for you to stop it. Yeah. So I did it on the line. Then when I look up, I didn't see any player around the box. So who I saw was Suka was like asking for the ball. But where he is, what is he going to do with the ball? If I give him the ball from there, he's not going to do anything. So like you rightly know, normally top players or good players have to make decisions of their own. And there's no wrong in trying from that angle to see if you can do it. Incredible goal. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I have to really, really shoot from there and get my angle right and then bend it and then it goes and I can see the defenders always doing, trying to head it out or do whatever they want to do but they can't. As you're describing it now, trust me, it's just bringing that memories man. <laughs> it's such an incredible goal, such an incredible moment. It's one of them moments that just stay with you as a fan forever and um, it's one of them moments that you just move from being a great player 
to legend, <laughs> legendary status. Cover hat trick against Chelsea, and not only that, that goal, oh, it, was, it was brilliant. Uh, yeah, that's wonderful because I know after that game, I still meet Papayaro. He was like, This guy didn't understand what I was telling him. <laughs> <laughs> he tried to put you off, in it? Mind games. Yeah, but it was good because you can see the happiness, the joy in, uh, in the fans, and they're like, Who? We did it. So everybody was like, Oh. Yeah. Even in the dressing room, it was like, Who? Uh, we forgot that we haven't won the league, but you can see the happiness, mm. the celebration, and everyone was like uh, up for it. And the next day in the training ground, it was like, who this is we, uh, mm. we can do everything. And then from there, we keep flying. You talk a lot about the spirit of that team. Yeah. What about the team now? Does this team have the same sort of spirit? Is this team good enough? to get back to where we want to be. We've got a new manager now, of course, um, who's come in after such a long time with one manager, 22 years of Arsene Wenger. Now we've got Unai Emery at the helm. Can this team get back to being where you guys were? Yes and no. Yes, they can, if they want to. When I, previously when I went to Arsenal games and I met Thierry and um, when, I, when we were discussing, he always do this for me. And I, immediately he did this, I know what he was saying. He was talking about the heart, the spirit, the, do they have it to go or not? So if you look at Aston team at that time, you have a mixture of old and young ones. And um, you can see characters in the dressing room, also in the game. Uh, but immediately he started changing. Mm. Things start changing as well, and then yeah, they can they might play the best football in the world, but when you don't have all these little things, it's still not going to work. So um, I wish that the new manager is going to recognize that and try to bring those in, because playing good football is good, doing other stuff is good, but you need fighters, you need winners, you need people who can go there, and if they lose a game, it. You know, they feel it. The mm. same way the fans, uh, when they lost a the game, they're not happy. That's the same way the players have to also respond to games that is not going well for them. So when you go back, you have to work extra. So if you ask me if they have that, we have only four games that we have played. Two we lost, two we won. So let's see if, yeah, if they can, not the same behavior and the same way that we did the last time. This time it's a new manager. He needs to really, really make sure that the players have the heart and they are winners. So when, the, when you put that in their head, everybody will respond. But if it's only to play games and laugh about and win, play good football, and when it matters, you can't turn up, then it's difficult. Mm. And what, you know, obviously as a centre forward yourself, we've got two good ones at the moment. Um, should they be playing together? We saw, saw the other day, they played together against Cardiff. Brilliant. Um, you know, both of them scored amazing goals, assists. Is it time to play the two of them, Lacazette and Aubameyang, together um, up front for the club? Yeah, but it depends on the, yeah, on the trainer. Uh, he knows what he wants. He knows uh, if he's going to use them or not. But for me, if you're a striker, you're alone, it's always difficult. You might be good, you might do a lot of things, uh, defenders are afraid of you, but can you imagine when you have two strikers? Mm. You can't even control one and then you have two. So, but f I, I understand that some managers don't want to play in that way because they believe they might, there's a lot of openings and they want to first be careful mm. before they can. But if you ask me, why not? If they have done it and they did well and they can still do more. So it's good to have your best strikers both of them to be in the same pitch uh, at the same time and then uh, give out goals because when you score goals, you win games. So, mm. uh, yeah, I would advise if he can start playing them. Mm. Iwobi, Nigerian like yourself, carrying on the torch of uh, Nigerian players at Arsenal. Um, and you know what, he, he had a bit of a disappointing season last season. He started this season pretty well. What's your advice for him? Because I see such a talented player who's come through the ranks I really, really want him, want him to um, succeed at Arsenal. Um, what, what would your advice be for Alex Iwobi? Yeah, uh, when I see him, I always tell him that. I always say to him, listen, 
you're a very good player, and everybody knows that you have a lot of talent, you haven't even uh, made use of them. So you don't keep it at home. You go there uh, week in, week out, you want to do your best and be the best. Uh, but I see this in him that he thinks that he's not top. And when you don't have that belief that you have reached mm -hmm. that level to still command uh, respect and to show everybody that I'm not a part player, I want to be the best. I want to be people who, when you call the name Arsenal, you call it will be you call Ozil and all those stuff. Mm -hmm. Then he can now start doing things. But for now, he still thinks, oh, let me go and play and come out. Let me go and play and come out. But what he got, because he's a good player, people want more from him. Yeah. So he needs to give more. And that's the pressure of a player. When you have that pressure on you, you have he's, to... He's, he's got it, isn't he? He's got it. I look at him, right? Like the other day he was playing and he's so strong. So difficult to get off the ball. Got so many tricks. That must be the JJ Okocha in his family, right? And he's got it. But you, you are right. He, last year he was playing with such low confidence, but it's just about belief with him, isn't it? That's what I'm saying. He needs to, like, he needs to know who he is. For me to say it, even his uh, uncle is going to say the same to him, yeah. he, you are one of the best. But you have to now show it to them that, yes, I'm here and I'm here to stay. Um, I'm not here as part player. I'm here to command my uh, respect and show people that I can do it. It's like when we have Thierry, you have uh, Beckham, you have this and have that, you have Kanu. I'm not going to sit down and say, oh, he, I will come. No, no, no. He just left for the trainer to decide who he wants to play. Then I'm giving him headaches and he wants to know that. Mm. And when I have that chance, of course, I have to prove that, yeah, I'm top. I want to be there. So for him, when he comes to Nigeria, he's a different player. Mm. In Nigeria, he's a wobi. Everybody knows. And he Pressure's knows. off. Yeah. But he knows that, yes, we need him, and he delivers. He, he's the boss. He commands. And so mm. the same thing, he needs to go back to Asma and do the same way. Mm. Now, listen, the most heartwarming moment. Seeing as we seen as we got your heart foundation, we're talking about the heart, the heart of the team, the problems you had with your heart that's now fixed. Your most heartwarming moment. Um, and the goals I scored on what? Yeah. You just said one now. <laughs> <laughs> we can't get past that. No. We can't get past that hat trick. No way. <laughs> no, you know, in Nigeria, in Africa, the first country to win the Olympics is Nigeria. And um, I remember then, we have the dream team, Brazil. Mm. And when oh, I yeah, said, yeah, yeah. yeah, when I say Brazil, it was not like just Brazil. It was the best Brazilian team put together. It's like Bebeto, Rivado, Ronaldo. You can start naming them. Mm. And for us, it's not like they're playing the Olympics. That's the national team playing the Olympics. Yeah. And during that time, they were playing friendly games. And we were like 5-0 against Barcelona, 3-0 against this. People were like scared of them. <laughs> Nobody wants to play against them. And you have Argentina and you have Crespo. You have a lot of good players in, in that team. And then coming to Nigeria from Africa, we are even fighting for our allowance. And we are, we are it's like, since we are not really the way uh, structured for us to become champion. Mm -hmm. But um, like I said, that's all about the belief and the spirit. And the spirit, the Nigerian spirit is like, we are going to die, and we have the team that the same team with uh, like Arsenal are then. We are a team that we don't want to lose to any team. Mm. With all the names, with all the Brazil, Argentina, whatever it is, we still believe that we are the best. <laughs> <laughs> for people out there, they are better than us, but for us, we are the best and the same level with everybody. So against our Brazil in the semi finals, um, the same thing really happened. Uh, before we could understand what was going on, we were like 3-1 down. And um, 10 minutes to go, yeah, 10, 5 minutes to go, um, we have to yeah, manage to score two, and it was 3-2. And during the game, when it was 3-2, they have to um, substitute uh, Ronaldo because they want to keep him for the next uh, in the final, so they made a change. And if you look at the bench, they were like laughing and we were like cracking jokes. And <laughs> <laughs> so for us, it was like not really good, but that's how it is. 
One minute to go, and I was a throw in from the line, JJ Okocha, I have to throw. And I was backing the keeper, and um, um, Teslim, the Nigerian player, first kicked the ball, and I saw the two defenders and the keeper. And when you're backing a keeper, it's always difficult for you to score. So either you kick it back for him, and that's what we was expecting, but I didn't do that. So I have to spin the ball to my advantage, and then he goes for the back uh, flip or back kick, and then I have to shoot and score. And it was 3-3, three, three. that's a minute to finish. So we came back 3-3, three, three, and then at that time it was golden goal. And if yeah. you score, and then they will qualify for the finals. And um, we have two defenders, and when they pass the ball to Victor Beba, he hit the back. Supposed to be a good ball for him to score, but he hit his back, and this was outside the 18-yard box. And then I saw the ball coming to me. I saw the two defenders. I have to do the fake shot. That's something I did with Edigo, mm. the goalkeeper. When I did that, I saw the defenders showing me the back of their jersey, and which is good for me. And then from there, with the left, then I have to finish. That was a home one. And the whole country, and then there was a lot of big, big problem in the country. Mm. And for African team, nobody believes that we can even win Brazil. And for us, only the players really believe that they can do it. Mm. But the fans, whoever it is, nobody believes. Even Brazil, um, the players in India didn't believe that this is going to happen. Then I scored, it was like 4-3, and Brazil was out of uh, the Olympics. Yes, yeah, amazing moment, yeah. amazing moment. Most heart, most heart stopping moment, apart from the obvious one. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that's a tough one. <laughs> you know, when I played for Ajax, um, 95, uh, we won against AC Milan. Uh, won 95 against AC Milan Champions League. And then uh, 96, we came back against Juventus. Now, with Juventus, they have a lot of good players, but age-wise, they are older. They are like, for us, maybe we're going to run them down and uh, win the game. And we know it's going to be difficult, but not the way they played. So we are like, okay, let's go in and do the same thing that we did against AC Milan. And then, but we didn't even believe it because they played 90 minutes and they played extra time with us and the same level. They were not tired. I don't know what happened, but they were like on top of the game. And finally, uh, the penalties uh, were lost. That was one that I really, I could have been saying two Champions League. Uh, no yeah. really. Tough, but you've had a good career. Don't worry about that. You've had an amazing career. Listen, um, it's been a pleasure to interview, absolute pleasure. As I said, you, you transcend just playing football on the pitch. And once again, tell us about this amazing event that you're doing on the 30th of September to raise money for your Heart Foundation, which is, which is a fantastic, you know, you were saying earlier, you treated over 500 um, children. It's amazing. Um, how people can come along, how they can get involved. Um, yeah, it's going to be at Barnett FC Stadium, The Hive, um, 3 p.m. on 30th September. And tickets, you can get it from Barnett FC website. And also you can get it from Masters uh, um, Football. Um, you go in there, of course, definitely we follow uh, the bio and then you can see how to get the tickets. Getting the tickets is like you supporting the foundation. Um, first, you're going to enjoy the game, but on the same other hand, you're supporting the less privileged kids with heart problem. And like I said, the 200 are out there praying for it to be successful. And for it to be successful is for people to buy tickets to come on that day. And then there's also the other side of it, you can also donate. You can donate through the banks. Of course, we're going to give out the banks uh, information. and. Um, just giving, I can also do from there. There's a lot of ways to also donate, but um, it's a game that we want to raise as much as we can and go back and uh, make sure that uh, we deliver and help them out. Uh, just to let people know, a lot of the operation we started in England, it was very expensive. We went to Israel, it was okay. But uh, we have a good uh, hospital in India where we are doing it and it's more cheaper 
than mm -hmm. Israel and England. So wherever we raise now, we are still going to travel with the kids from Africa to India and then bring them back. So listen, it's amazing charity, amazing Heart Foundation. Make sure you get involved. We'll put all the links in the description. Remember, um, as Carney said, try and get to the game because there's going to be some amazing um, footballers on display there. So try and get to the game. But even if you can't get to the game, you're abroad or you're far away, you can still donate, um, use the links and uh, give to this amazing charity. This, this man's doing amazing work. Um, and it's been an absolute pleasure to interview you. Keep up the good work. And, um, you know, that hat trick. I just can't get it out of my head even talking about it. Amazing. Thank you. Nice to, uh, yeah, to be here. And thanks for all the support. Um, we really appreciate. I know I've seen the good works you are doing and keep doing it. Um, I'm one of the fans. Maybe you didn't know. <laughs> I always say that because I follow all the stuff that you're doing and um, how you want the us not uh, club to go more and uh, progress more because mm -hmm. everything you're doing is positive. So, to yeah, enhance the team and uh, help the team. People might see that sometimes it's negative, but it's not negative. Yeah, I believe it's something that if then that we are playing and then we have this, if I'm playing today and I didn't do well, and somebody out there on uh, AFTV and saying, come on, Kano, what's wrong with you? The <laughs> next day, <laughs> I'll go to the pitch, I want to do well. <laughs> when have they ever said it that nice? <laughs> That, that's, that's life. Not everybody is going to be happy yeah. with what you're doing. But sometimes with footballers, um, the strong ones, they tend to learn from what you're going to say. Mm. And for me, what you say out there is not everything that I will accept, but sometimes you're also helping me to improve. So bad, mm. good, a good footballer is always a good footballer. Thank you very much. Brilliant.